For the 18th straight time, North Central football won over North Park. The Cardinals' first shutout of the season included 35 first-half points and four defensive stops on fourth down. The impressive win moves North Central to 6-0 and sets them up for a homecoming matchup with 1-5 Carthage. We get you ready for the game next on the Red Zone. Welcome inside the Red Zone. I'm Justin Zipser. NCC head coach John Thorne joins us to open the show as he does each and every week. John, thanks for joining us. All right. Good to be here. Another win, 6-0 on the season, 42 to nothing uh, over North Park. It's your 18th straight victory over the Vikings. Uh, really, this is a team that we kind of expected that you would do well against, but really they showed a lot of fight in this game despite the score. You know, they have more seniors this year than they've ever had in all the years we played them before. And I think that that really showed up. They did some good things on defense and made it tough for our inside running game. And uh, offensively, they uh, got a little bit of running yards a few times. And we thought their quarterback was going to have some great passing yardage, but uh, he didn't have his best day. And so we uh, were able to really shut him down to like 130 yards when he came in, averaging 300 a game uh, against other conference teams. So. It was totally different uh, North Park atmosphere than, than in the past in some ways. You mm -hmm. know, the head coach is a friend of mine, and I was so happy that he won the, that first game. And 89 losses in a row is way too many. Surely it is. Uh, the defense looked good. The offense looked good. And uh, it was a credit to both of those units for really the 42 to nothing win. And before we get anywhere else with Coach Thorne, let's go to the highlight and see exactly how North Central won the game. North Central in Chicago for a chance at its 18th straight victory over North Park. But the Vikings with some hope this year with new QB TD Conway, his dad Mike, the new MPU head coach. The Cardinals start strong as usual. First down throws to Chad O'Kane and A.J. Thomas set up this run from the 35-yard line. Matt Randolph does the rest. Gets his jersey dirty for good measure, 7-0 after a few minutes. Moments later, North Central's offense strikes again quickly. Spencer Stanek with all day in the pocket to find Peter Sorensen. The wideout takes it the extra 10 or so yards into the end zone for his fourth TD catch of the year, 14-0. For solid Cardinals defense to end the first, NPU first down for Magwood, Adam Sadarski and Shane Durking among others taking him down. Third and long, John Ficosi with the sack. Cardinals take the punt and O'Shane Brown goes to work. A simple off-tackle run turns into a not-so-simple stop for the Vikings defense. Brown all the way from 41 yards out, 21 zip. The first play of NCC's next series looks oddly familiar. This time it's Stanek showing the wheels to the far side. 44 yards later, it's 28-0 North Central. Stanek's sixth rush touchdown of the year. No problem. Next play, Stanek gets time and floats it up for Thomas. The tight end uncovered in the end zone. 35 to nothing, cards at half. Cardinals 6-0 to start the season. It was another good rushing performance for the team. 328 to 76. That was the rushing advantage for you guys over the Vikings. Uh, it really a balanced effort, too. We saw a lot of good yardage from, from O'Shane, from Matt, from Ryan, from Spencer as well. Uh, the running game really coming into its own, and as we've seen more and more this year, a balanced attack each and every week on the offense. Yeah, we were actually during the game very frustrated that we weren't able to run inside. Mm -hmm. But as we look back at the film, uh, North Park was doing a great job with their twisting of their linemen, uh, shooting some uh, linebackers into some gaps, and uh, we weren't getting off of our double teams quick enough to get them. But most of it was the, the tackle and twists. Uh, they did a really good job. And they hadn't shown it very much, and our guys... Um, we're having trouble picking it up. So uh, Coach Jeff got us uh, out on the perimeter, and that's when everything just really, really started to open up. And several guys had some great runs, especially O'Shane. We were, we've been waiting for him to show some, some speed, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, 
he looked uh, very good this game. Yeah, he, got, he had a couple of rushes to the outside where it just looked extremely fast and, and very, uh, very good out in the open field. Let's talk a little bit about special teams. This is a, an area that you're kind of an expert in. You're a special teams guy. There was one moment in the game where John Skokna had a punt return touchdown called back. There were a couple of penalty issues throughout the game. Special teams, uh, good side of it was, you know, Kevin Loof had a pretty good game as well. A uh, punt mm -hmm. net average of around 42 and a half uh, yards per punt. Right. Give me a little bit of a lowdown on uh, what you're seeing on a special team so far. Well, that's a great question because it's been uh, difficult this year to get uh, special teams to all come together. And uh, Kevin, the last two weeks in a row, has averaged about 42 yards uh, each each week, but when we get a great uh, punt return, it keeps getting called back. You know, so we're waiting for one of those where we uh, get to uh, cheer and holler on the sidelines because we really did have a great punt return. Uh, we desperately wanted to have a, a kickoff return because we need a lot of practice on. I think we're last in the nation and uh, with like nine yards per return. We we did a fair catch on one. You don't want to do that too often, mm -hmm. you know. And we caught one with our knee on the ground, so that, that's really hurt us. But they kicked it out of bounds, so we said, well, then do it over. They kicked it out of bounds again. <laughs> I was really tempted to just keep saying, all right, keep kicking it until they finally kicked it. But we were, you know, ahead 35 nothing at the time. I thought well, maybe we better just get this game uh, going. So uh, issues are still there that we're trying to improve. And uh, this week, uh, yesterday, I thought we had a real good day with special teams. So hopefully some good things are going to happen uh, each week the rest of the way. And we certainly hope so. Uh, another cool thing about this game against North Park was that it was your first shutout of the season. What we've seen over the last couple of games is that you jump out to a big lead, you're able to get some of your younger players into the contest, and uh, you know where the starters kind of shut out the opposing team in the first half, the uh, players, the younger guys that get into the second half, give up a couple points here and there, but still look pretty good. This week, they had a shutout uh, of their own as well. They really did, and it was a uh, very difficult one because uh, <laughs> North Park was right down inside the five-yard line and they fumbled and we luckily scooped it up and stopped that one. Then they got right back again in the, uh, almost the very next possession. And um, they held them, but they wanted to try and kick a field goal. And luckily it was a bad snap and then mm -hmm. everybody was r running around. We finally tackled him. I think if he would have just <laughs> thrown it back. <laughs> they had all kinds of guys in the end zone that he could have thrown it to. But uh, it was fun. The, the older guys were just cheering and hollering for him like crazy because they wanted to keep that uh, shutout. And so we're really happy the young guys were able to do it for him. Cool. Well, uh, when we return on the Red Zone, we'll continue to chat with head coach John Thorne next here after the break. Yes, ready, ready. Let's go get it. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. We're back inside the red zone and with Coach Thorne for a few more minutes. Coach, uh, got Carthage this upcoming weekend. This is homecoming weekend. Always a pretty cool time to be around Benedetti Worley Stadium on the weekend. What's kind of your experience dealing with these homecoming games? Obviously, it's a kind of a party atmosphere heading mm -hmm. into Saturday. You know, it's really fun. Uh, it's a lot different than the high school homecomings. Um, but I, I just love it at the college. Uh, there's just uh, so many uh, great people that... Uh, have, are coming back to say thank you to North Central College to see all their friends uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully to come and enjoy a football game. So it's, uh, it's a great atmosphere. Our players I know are really enthused about it and they're ready to play and a lot of our alumni guys are going to be there cheering for them. So it'd be good to see all those faces again. 
obviously as a coach, you, you get to know some of these players pretty well, so I'm sure it's obviously good to see some of these older players uh, come back each year. Uh, let's talk a little about the football team that Carthage is putting out this year. 1-5 and five on the season, 0-3 in CCIW play. They've lost uh, their last five straight games, and uh, this is a team with a, a younger coach, Tim Yeager, and um, they're going to more of a pro-style offense this year. What, uh, what do you see out of Carthage this year? You know, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, I don't think they've found their true identity yet. And uh, they're playing a lot of very young guys. Uh, it's uh, probably the smallest uh, Carthage team we've ever seen in numbers of players and even in some of the size of some of their players. So we're not totally sure exactly what they're going to br bring when they come on Saturday. But uh, they play hard, they play fast, they play physical like all the Carthage teams have done in the past. So we're expecting it to be a, you know, a hard fought game. But um, why they've lost five in a row, it's just a little hard to, you know, put a finger on it. Sometimes it'll be a special teams play, sometimes it'll be an offensive play, sometimes defense, you know. So, um, and I think they have some injuries just like we do. So, uh, I think we're going to be fine, but uh, you, you just want to wait and see. Now, speaking of injuries, you know most of the NCC's roster has been out there for just about every snap this year, but some Cardinals haven't been so lucky. Injuries have opened the door for other players, though, especially on North Central's offensive line. That's the subject for this week's Cardinal Corner. The North Central offensive line has been a revolving door of players through the first six games of the season. Game one at the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse, NCC started tackles Greg Whalen and Jace Werkheiser, with guards Alex Mann and Brian Wilson, along with center John Canova. This past weekend in game six, only Whalen remained as a starter. Werkheiser is just getting off an ankle injury. Really, it's a senior driven group. Jace and Greg have done a great job for me, kind of policing uh, the things going on as a young coach. That's awesome. With the injuries, assistant coach Chris Kirkpatrick, along with his two seniors, Whalen and Werkheiser, have brought along the next guys on the depth chart. Pat Bolger, Chris James, Mark Delorier, John Hosey, and Eric Naparik. Actually, a funny thing about injuries, last year I uh, broke my foot halfway through the season, and coming back this year, I hit the offseason hard, real hard, actually. And this camp, this camp was one of my best camps, and uh, I was pretty proud of the way I worked. Kirkpatrick says he treats all Americans like Werkheiser and backups all the same, which builds up confidence of everyone. Sometimes it's, it's hard to stay confident throughout a whole game. You're going to have mess ups and stuff, but um, when you got guys behind you and helping you, it's pretty easy. Also complicating matters, the younger players are playing out of position. Delorier started at guard and now is getting play at center. Hosey and Naprick, usually tackles, are now guards. Most people wouldn't understand, but those are extremely big jumps for some people to make, and they've done it no problem. So I, I see no reason why the next couple of years can't have a great O-line as well, because we're just going to reload with these guys that have been getting reps. So obviously you've had to deal with injuries throughout the season, but as we just saw in the story that you really had guys step up, and, and we've talked about this before during the year that you get to plug in some of these younger guys in a starting type role and give them experience for, for future seasons. Right, you know, and at, especially at offensive line, you know, so many programs, they have five offensive linemen and they want those five to play every down, every game, the whole time. And I've always thought it would be great for them to be able to rotate during a game just like you do with defensive linemen. Uh, so this year, We've had 10 different players, different offensive linemen, to where they were a starter. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty unusual. We thought we had good depth, and evidently we do, because um, really Greg Whalen is the only starter who's played every game. And most teams that are having a good season Almost all five of the starters on offensive line have played every single game. Uh, Coach Kirkpatrick did a fabulous job of just getting them to see it, understand it, believe in it, and after enough donuts, they were ready to try it. <laughs> so it was, it was a fun day yesterday. 
Uh, you, I just want to touch on this quickly because we, we have talked about this a little bit before. You're, you're kind of the, the head coach, or you're obviously the head coach, but you're also coaching the offensive line as well. Quickly, what type of knowledge are you trying to impart to these guys as they're being plugged in week after week? Nobody listens to me anymore. I'm just an old <laughs> grandpa, and uh, so I'm, I haven't done anything to help them. But uh, Coach Jeff and Coach Kirkpatrick have really and the players themselves. They, they really care so much about each other. They're constantly helping each other. They're always picking each other up, you know, and uh, that's, that's what you have to have, you know. And so uh, it's been fun to watch it from my position. Well, we always enjoy listening to you, even if some of the players don't. We, we, we definitely enjoy your time here on the Red Zone. So thanks for joining us, and we'll, we'll see you next week as we do every week. All right. Thank you, Justin. We still have some more X's and O's to get through. Two of the season's most impressive Cardinals join us after the break next on the Red Zone. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Welcome back. Quarterback Spencer Stanek and linebacker Nick Slezak with us now to join us on the Red Zone. Guys, thanks for uh, stepping in with us. Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, two of the, the leading Cardinals uh, stat-wise throughout the, throughout the season so far with us, uh, you being the quarterback, you being one of the main linebackers. Nick, I, I think you have a very interesting story. It's kind of been told before, but third position in three years. You started as a wide receiver, went to safety. Now linebacker when uh, defensive coordinator Mike Murray saw the type of speed and athleticism that you have. Moved you to linebacker. Why has it been such a good fit for you this year? Uh, well, I played in high school, um, so you know linebackers just been a spot where I've always been comfortable at. Uh, I like being in the middle of everything on every play, um, so I just feel comfortable trying to use my speed to get around offensive linemen and try to make big plays. And like you said, you played it in high school at Glenbard South. Mm -hmm. What's the, the main difference between playing at the high school level uh, up to one of the best D3 programs in the, in the nation? Uh, definitely, I mean, the speed, uh, especially with our offense line, when we go ones versus ones in practice, uh, you know, you see guys like Greg and Jace that are huge, and you're like, oh, I could just run around them, but <laughs> they get to you real fast. And uh, so the speed's a big difference, and then the strength of all the offensive linemen, when they get a hand on you, uh, it's really hard to get off. So really try to have to avoid getting their hands on you and all that. Now, speaking of speed, we have uh, the new offensive system this year where you guys speed it up, and it's really been one of the main reasons the offense has been so successful. Why have you had so much fun playing in this system this year, Spencer? Um, you know, I've never really played in a system like this before. You know, we've tried it in the past, um, trying to go fast, but I guess this year we really committed to it. Um, you know, once you get so many plays off in a game, you know, things just start to click, and it's just uh, it's really fun to play in a system like this. So, uh, you know, I'm having a great time, and hopefully we can keep the speed up uh, going into the playoffs. And last week on the show, Coach Thorne told us that you kind of graduated to that graduate level of quarterbacking where you're starting to read those wide receiver routes really perfectly and throw the ball before they even make their breaks in the route. Uh, how much work did you do in the offseason to lead to this kind of progression in, in your uh, fifth year? Uh, yeah, we did a lot of work in the offseason, uh, throwing with uh, Chad and Pete. Um, not so much Rizek because he was in Arizona. Um, but, yeah, we do seven-on-sevens. Uh, we try to do it twice a week in the summer uh, just to really get the chemistry going with all the guys. And it also helps when you have an O-line like, like we do um, where I get so much time in the pocket. It's, uh, it's a lot easier to make the kind of throws that I have to make. And, Nick, as a linebacker, you're obviously sometimes covering some of the tight ends, some of the wide receivers in the slot position, and you being a former wide receiver. How has that helped you uh, in your new defensive uh, position this year? Yeah, just being able to uh, read what receivers, what kind of stems they're trying to take and, you know, with their head fakes and all that, uh, being able to read that and just recognize how they're running their routes, that's really helped me out playing receiver. And then playing free safety last year, going up against slot receivers pretty much all year in man coverage, um, just getting used to that. It's a very tough, very tough, tough co coverage to do, but... Um, you know, playing those two positions has really helped me out. And going back to North Park, this is a team that when we talked with Coach Thorne, he, he made a very big uh, point of 
you guys try, starting to respect North Park and, and kind of you know, being happy for them and the fact that they won their conference game uh, this season for the first time in a number of years. Um, how big of a deal was that throughout the week, and, and what was it like playing this, this kind of new, this new North Park offense and defense, really? Um, yeah, I mean, they were a lot. I mean, they're always a physical team, North Park is. You know, they're one of the hardest hitting teams I think we play in all conference play. They always come out ready to play. You know, they're never, you know, never not ready to play a game against us. But um, yeah, with that seniors that they had, you know, they're a lot more exper experienced and, uh, you know, they were a lot better than the other teams we played in the past. You know, it was really nice to see them taking that next step uh, with their program. So I think hopefully in the next coming years, they're going to be a lot better team than usual. And a few other players had some good things to say about North Park as well as we take a look in this week's What's the Word. We always know that it's not going to be just an easy game when we come out and play North Park. They're going to come out and they're going to play hard and they're going to tackle well. And they did. They played. They hit hard and there were some really good hits out here. Um, so we know that we can't take them for granted every week. So uh, we just expected to come out and do our best and when we came out we know that we're gonna take care of them if we play our best so they always play tough though so they did really well he's actually he's a very good quarterback and uh, he has a brother on the offense as well actually and we saw them out in the field three hours before the game and they were warming up getting ready to go so they're gonna be some serious players in the conference in the next couple of years and I really look forward to seeing those guys play uh, well what we learned today is uh, you know we had a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of things that we're gonna be able to correct on film and a lot of the guys who did get, into, uh, get to play in the second half today, are they're going to get some things that they'll be able to correct too, which will be uh, very good for the team moving forward into the later weeks in the season. Um, you know, other than that, this they're a better team than uh, what the score shows, and you know, it's good to come out here and compete and, and play a team in the conference. And we have homecoming next week, so that should be a lot of fun. So Nick, uh, a shutout this week for the first time this season, and as we talked about with Coach Thorne, the the, the younger guys got in and kind of upheld that shutout mentality. What have you kind of told some of the younger players when they get a chance to play in the second half of these games that are a little bit wider margin score-wise? What do you tell them uh, when they get in? What, they, what are you trying to ex let them experience? Well, you know, it's just important that uh, they understand that throughout the playoffs and stuff, we're going to need these guys to step up because guys will get beat up and tired and all that, so they're going to have to step in and fill in our roles. So I just tell them, you know, pretend like it's a, a playoff game and. Um, it's, it's good to send a message out to the rest of the conference and the rest of the nation that our backups can play just as well as our starters. Um, so an offense that just doesn't have to worry about our starters, but they have our backups to worry about as well. So um, it's awesome to let those guys get in and get a chance to play because a lot of them are just great players, and it's, it's fun to watch them have fun so, and succeed especially. So it's a lot of fun. And Spencer, 2011, you took the year off. You came back in 2012, and you led the CCIW in passing yardage. Not an easy thing to do. And this year, you're ha having, obviously, the best year of, of your North Central career. What was it like in 2011, taking that year off? What did you learn in your time off? And, and what have you taken into your fifth year here? Yeah, it was tough um, in 2011, you know, uh, not being with the team. You know, it was kind of lonely, you know, not hanging out with the guys all the time and being at practice and stuff. But uh, I don't know, I just think I just learned that uh, – when I come back, I need to be a little more mature um, with my decision making and stuff on the field and off the field. Um, and you know, it just felt great to get back with the guys um, last year. And you know, we really bonded like uh, like in 2010 um, before I left. But uh, yeah, especially this year too. You know, we're such a close knit group of guys. It's really cool to be with all these seniors and be you know included in this group of seniors. Um, just because we're all great friends, and you know, I think that's that's why we're having such a special season. And uh, we hope it continues. And the cool thing, Spencer, I think about your season is that you're spreading the ball so well. A lot of different receivers and a lot of different yardage numbers uh, throughout the games this year. What's it like playing with so many talented receivers, and how much easier does that make your job as a quarterback? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really fun playing with all these guys, um, you know, because the defense can't just key on one guy. You know, if they're going to key on Pete, you know, we'll th throw the ball to Chad. If they can't, Chad, we'll throw it to Rizek and vice versa. But, I mean, um, you know, all the guys can just run some great routes. You know, they have great hands. Uh, you know, they can make moves after the catch. So it makes my job a ton easier uh, when, you guys, when you have great receivers like these guys. And 56 tackles leads to CCIW. You're having a great season, Nick, and uh, you're leading the CCIW in uh, yards per game as a quarterback. Excellent season so far, and we wish you guys the best of luck throughout the rest. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Stick with the Red Zone. North Central Sports Information Director Clark Tusher jumps on the set in a moment to give us the lowdown the rest of this week's happenings in Cardinal Athletics.
50 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Thanks for staying locked on Channel 17. We wrap up another episode with North Central SID Clark Tusher. Thanks for joining us, Clark. It's nice to be here. Uh, women's and men's cross country. Both of these teams heading toward the final part of each respective schedule, and they're heading toward the CCIW championships and getting off the UW Brooks Invitational. And both very good showings for the men and the women. The men uh, finished in uh, the, the first spot. Yeah, in terms of uh, you know, the size and competitive uh, nature of the field, it's about as close as you can get to simulating the national championships. You know, you don't see too many more meets with more than 37 teams uh, mm -hmm. on the course as we had on Saturday. And for them to win uh, by, you know, almost double the points that they actually scored in the meet, they had six of their top guys in the top 20. Uh, you know, to do that against a team that probably, a field that probably included about a third of the national championship field that we'll see next month, uh, was a, a very impressive performance to close out the regular season. And John Crane, once again, he's na named a National Runner of the Week by the USTF CCCA. And uh, just every single week this guy comes out and performs. He does his job. He's been excellent so far this season. Well, that's what, you know, three or four months of 100-mile weeks will do that for you. <laughs> I think he's been the most consistent trainer uh, on the team, and, and that has bred consistent racing. So we've... Uh, We've seen that kind of effort from him, you know, since they started racing back at the end of August, mm -hmm. and you know he's been able to stay healthy this year. Uh, he's been a very, very difficult guy to stay with uh, the last couple of weeks. And over to the women, they were racing on the same course, same day at the at the Brooks Invitational, and same 37 team field, ninth place finish, and uh, this is a team that finished this past week fifth in the Midwest region as far as rankings go, and they're starting to hit that uptick as well, and really starting to get going heading into the CCIW championships. Yeah, they finished ahead of three ranked teams and four conference opponents in that meet. So, uh, you know, when the rankings come out, the next national rankings, we may see them start to get some votes and move up that way. Uh, you know, the coaches pointed to that meet as, as the big meet as far as evaluating who was going to run in the postseason at the conference and regionals and, and try to get them a, another bid to the national championships. And, you know, they, they certainly, you know, looked the part of a team that was ready to, to contend for a national championship bid. And we'll have to see if that pans out over the next couple of meets. And the cool thing about the next meet, the CCIW championships on November 2nd, it's, uh, it's kind of in a home field advantage type atmosphere where they're racing at St. James Farm in Warrenville. Uh, they've had a lot of success there over, over the last couple of years. It's a course we've raced on a lot lately. Um, you know, Wheaton uses it as a home course as well. Uh, COD, Benedictine, uh, all host meets there. Um, you know, we actually had the meet there last year, the conference meet that was hosted by Wheaton, and now we're hosting it in the same location. So familiarity uh, is going to be, you know, a, a strength not just for us but for Wheaton as well. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that uh, you know don't rely too much on that and remember mm -hmm. that you actually have to go out there and race. Men going for their 40th, 40th consecutive CCIW title, women fourth in fifth years. Let's switch over to women's volleyball, a team that uh, a couple nights ago, last night was in Carthage in Kenosha and falling to one and four in conference play. Another tough battle. This team seems to, to be on the cusp of winning sets, but they seem to give up those, those runs here and there that kind of doom them in the end. Yeah, they really haven't had the kind of success that's enabled them to establish the kind of confidence that they would need uh, to go into a match like that against a, a nationally successful program on their home court. So, you know, it's still a, a team in the stage of developing and, and kind of looking toward the future now, trying to get some younger players into the lineup. Well, Clark, we uh, enjoy your time as always, and we uh, will see you next week. Thank you. That's a wrap on this edition of The Red Zone. Be sure to tune in to NCTV or head to nctv17.com this Saturday, the 26th. We have live coverage of the homecoming game against Carthage College. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. I'm Justin Zipser. We'll see you next week on The Red Zone.